One of the challenges that comes up is if Lois is going to digitally sign something. So she's got her public private key and she's going to use her private key to digitally sign either a packet or a file and send it over to Bob. If Bob wants to decrypt and verify Lois's signature, Bob is going to need a copy of Lois's public key. And that is a problem if Bob doesn't have a copy of Lois's public key. So a fantastic way of delivering Lois's public key over to Bob is to deliver it via a digital certificate. So as part of the exchange between Lois and Bob, Lois can send over her digital certificate to Bob and include it in the digital certificate of Lois. As she sends it over to Bob, it's going to have a few things. It's going to have the subject name. In this case, if it's Lois's digital certificate, maybe that certificate is used with www.lois.com. It's going to have the subject's name as part of that certificate. It's also going to have that subject, in this case, Lois's site of www.lois.com, the subject's public key. Their certificate is also going to be signed by a trusted third party. Now that trusted third party is going to be the issuer who issued that certificate to Lois. And that in the public internet is referred to as a certificate authority or CA. We'll have a separate nugget just on that. The certificate is also going to have some basic constraints, including how long is this certificate valid, from what day and what year to what day and what year. And if the receiving party gets that certificate outside of that date range, they can go ahead and consider that certificate to not be valid. It's also going to include the site name that this certificate could be used with. Going back to Lois's site, we could have www.lois.com. And the certificate could identify that this certificate and its associated public key is good for that specific site. It's also going to have some other details in that certificate regarding the algorithms that were used as part of that cert. And let me point out the players. Here we have the .171, which is a private RFC 1918 address. That is the computer that I'm currently sitting at. And the address ending in .182 is a public IP address out on the internet that I'm currently connected to and working with. So in our play-by-play, -play, here we have our three-way handshake regarding TCP, the SYN, SYNAC, and Acknowledgement. Then we have a client hello, we have a server hello. And what I want to focus on right here is this packet right here, which in this capture is packet number eight. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And let me resize this a little bit so we get the most real estate here. So with this entry selected, let's go ahead and expand the packet detail window regarding secure sockets layer. And it's TLS version 1.2. If we expand that, here we have the handshake protocol. And then if we expand the handshake protocol, and then further if we expand the certificates, and then within certificates, we have the first certificate right here, if we expand that. And then if we expand signed certificate, which implies it's signed by a certificate authority who issued the certificate. And in this capture is the server sending its digital certificate over to me, the client. So here it says it's version 3, which represents an X.509 version 3 certificate, which is a standard for certificates. Here's a serial number. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so we can see everything. The certificate is signed. If we open up the issuer, it's going to identify who issued this certificate, and it appears to be a certificate authority from Symantec. Below that, we have the validity. So if we expand that, it's going to have the validity dates, not before and not after certain dates. And if we continue scrolling down, here we have the subject. This is regarding the subject of this digital certificate, and the subject is www.paypal.com. And below that, we have the subject public key information which is what we're after. So if we expand the subject public key and scroll down a little bit more and select that, this is indeed the public key for that subject, www.paypal.com. And as a client, if I trust the certificate and I extract this public key, I now have the public key associated with www.paypal.com. So as part of this capture, we can see that X.509 version 3 certificates contain the subject's public key. They identify who issued the certificate. It's also saying that it's signed by that certificate authority. And it also has some basic constraints, including validity dates within which the certificate can be considered valid. And the use of X.509 digital certificates is a great way and an efficient way to deliver public keys to another entity over a network. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.